Coming up on the DMT One to One Show, episode 71, an interview with uh, Jesse Johnson, a social entrepreneur who is the driving force behind the Voice of Masai Kickstarter campaign. This week's show is brought to you by Play MPE, providing secure music distribution and promotional services to the world's largest labels for over 10 years. Play MPE can be accessed on Windows and Mac computers, iOS, Android and BlackBerry mobile devices. Find out more on plaympe.com. Welcome to the DMT One to One show and today it's a real pleasure to welcome uh, Jesse Jensen, a social entrepreneur and uh, uh, currently involved uh, in the Voice of Mazai project that we're going to talk about on today's show. So hi Jesse and thanks for joining me from Houston. How's it going? Hello, thank you. It's good to be here. I appreciate it. It's a, 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 an absolute pleasure to have you and uh, today we're going to talk about a project that you just launched on Kickstarter which is the uh, Voice of uh, Mazai uh, album. So uh, first of all give us a little bit of an introduction on uh, how you got involved with this project and how, uh, how it all started out. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, quickly and briefly, uh, the Voice of Mazai work has evolved from um, some of my fine artwork. Um, in 2006, I was nominated as an emerging artist for a series of artwork called My Pop, which stood for My, Pre my Print on Poverty. And um, I used art as an awareness tool to help increase uh, civic dialogue and action to some of the, you know, the complexities and the issues. Um, and through that, I, was, I received a sponsorship to volunteer myself and to um, sort of further along my learning and so I chose Tanzania, and um, through that I met a woman's organization that introduced me to the choir, and the choir and I really had a sort of a just a, a pivotal moment where we met each other, had some startup dialogue, and then gave it some thought, and then I returned back to the U.S. after volunteering over there for a month and um, pitched an idea to them through some of the contacts that I had made that we record an album and really try to create a product that um, is more or less centric around individual empowerment. So it's really trying to create an opportunity for these choir members to generate, uh, you know, a supplemental little source of income for themselves. Yeah. And so through that, we produce the album and publish the album. And now the Voice of Masai album is available worldwide. That's fantastic. And, and the Kickstarter, for those that are watching the uh, video uh, version of the show, it's uh, 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 just above Jesse's name, but I'll read it out loud so people can go and check it out. I made a short short link for everybody, which is bit.ly slash voice of Masai with a double A M A A S A I. And uh, uh, of course, we're going to talk more about the uh, Kickstarter. But first of all, uh, tell me a little bit about how uh, sort of the choir found, because uh, of course, the, the issue of uh, copyright and making money from music, I, I guess for uh, the choir it was probably quite an, an, an alien thing. It's not something that perhaps they thought about when they were having, you know, when, when they were creating the choir in the first place. That's correct. Um, this was a new idea to everyone. And so we were some creative minds that came together. And uh, I certainly am working from a model to help them advance their creativity. And so I'm working in partnership with them and um, I'm managing the album. Uh, myself yeah. through my studio, but also am honoring um, them as the artists. So they get they earn a royalty off of the sales once we get the sales going. I mean, this is really startup. It's grassroots. Yeah, absolutely. So, and so, so in terms of like uh, payments, you know, what, how, how does that work? Of course, uh, uh, you know, the, the, it goes beyond purely money. It's, it's more about, you know, creating a, an ecosystem for them where they can sustain themselves, right? Yes, correct. Um, currently, how the model that we're that we've set up is every 30 CDs that we sell goes to purchasing a cow and then um, the you know the cows are going to the choir members the needy the most needy first um, and that's the system we'll have set up we have set up right now just as a startup solution but really once the sales hit some milestone markers then we can start using a you know more or less a payment system and we'll possibly use M pesa or some type of payment system where we're directly funding the choir members themselves and then they can purchase their own cows if that's what they need to do we want them to empower their own lives um, and make the decisions for their own lives we've just set up the model of purchasing cows now because it's most practical with the amount of money we're making from the album right now yeah sure absolutely and so um, uh, the album actually has been out for a little while but uh, you know with the kickstarter you're really stepping up things and and making it available in, in, in a number of different formats with a number of different uh, uh, potential uh, you know uh, perks and and, and 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 things that you can receive uh, if you uh, back the project at different levels and so how did you come up with all those different uh, uh, levels and uh, what 
were you thinking about when you when you uh, conceived the entire Kickstarter essentially? Yeah, thanks. That's a good question. Um, the the entire Kickstarter is really supposed to celebrate this the the humanity of this project and the creativity of human beings themselves. So through the through the Kickstarter campaign, it really gave us a unique platform to offer all this creative incentive for supporting something that's creative. So it's really that package of creativity, um, and the incentives themselves have really been a growth and an evolution of some of the products that I've built through Little Lady Studio and then also what I'm trying to develop more and more with the Maasai and some of the entrepreneurs I'm working with in Tanzania. So it's been an evolution and yet a celebration of, you know, of real creativity. Yeah, and obviously, you know, there is a, a big market for world music, but uh, we don't see that many projects that come out from such a sort of grassroots level from the ground up. How, how do you think this can evolve in perhaps empowering other uh, um, uh, people in, in different countries uh, where there aren't the resources to distribute music to uh, go about something along these lines without waiting for a world music label to come and sort of bestow upon them the, the resources to do this. Yeah, yeah, that's a, a great line of questioning and thoughts because um, one of the fundamental things we've accomplished is really creating that sense of hope within these yeah. choir members. And, you know, with, with that something so fundamental, um, creating that hope really opens your eyes and ideas and provokes thoughts to just having partnerships. I mean, I'm, I'm a creative individual that met some other creative individuals, you know, and you can build from that. So you really just have to use the power of creativity to try to drive, drive those projects or drive that product or whatever it is you're working on. Yeah. Um, and I, I think, I think um, back to your question really is forming partnerships and you know, working with building teams, teams of people that can accomplish kind of small goals that turn into larger, larger accomplishments. Yeah, because I mean, just in terms of infrastructure, I, I would imagine that even just getting the choir into a studio would have been a bit of a challenge uh, where you were. How, how did that happen? Was there a studio set up as somewhere nearby that you could use? Yeah, it was a bit of a challenge. And so that after I had returned to the U.S., I just really started reaching out to the international contacts I had made and asking if there was a recording studio anywhere near Moshi, which Moshi was where I had met um, some of the people I'd been working with. And the choir was about an hour from Moshi. Yeah. Um, but leading to that, yes, I was able to find a, a studio, a working professional studio in Arusha, which was it's about four hours from Ramiti from the choir's location. But it was a very awesome really professional studio wow, that great. the guys were professional that owned it and um i'm helping to try to spread awareness for their business also supporting those entrepreneurs so it was all done in country except for the production itself for quality control and yeah yeah sure of course and and sort of uh, thinking about the uh, message of the album as well like was there anything that the choir themselves wanted to uh, convey as far as uh, you know, knowing that this was going to be a project that perhaps would, would uh, be uh, have an international sort of resonance, uh, that they wanted to communicate through the album, through the lyrics, or, or anything around that, or is it more traditional music? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, um, I think as a choir themselves, they were really excited as the opportunity to give themselves a voice because the yeah. Maasai are displaced people that are struggling through quite a few things quite a few barriers actually and so i think they really recognize the opportunity for them just to have a voice through their music and really celebrate their land and their love of their their life and land through their music because it's such a fabric of what they believe in yeah that's great and so uh, obviously you are based in the in the u.s uh, you have a, a studio called little, little lady studio which you set up about three years ago and uh, so do, do you do you think that this is going to be something that you can uh, that, that you want to c carry on doing with uh, maybe finding uh, new projects in the future or, or how do you see this evolving oh certainly um with the Maasai themselves, I'd like to look out to album number two, you know, very directly with them. But um, with other also creative entrepreneurs, that's really what I try to do is advance creative pursuits. And yeah. um, they do have to fall in line with my criteria, some of the things that I look for. But through my product and brand itself, I really try to advanced creative pursuits of others because I think it's quite empowering so absolutely and, and finally let's talk about the platform Kickstarter uh, how do you find that in terms of you know uh, being this enabler to allow a project like this to, to, to get off the ground and uh, uh, you know have you considered other platforms while you were, while you were looking at this pr process and uh, uh, you know just in terms of sustainability do you think that this is a, is, is, is a good way forward uh, it's all been an evolution, you know, it's a slow progressive yeah. thing, but the Kickstarter cam platform, I think it's excellent. I really think it's a good 
tool. It's um, really well developed, so it's an easy tool to use for creatives. And as long as you are, you know, have a portfolio that you've been building, and you can put together incentives and a real, you know, a real clear message of what you're trying to accomplish, I think it's an excellent tool. Um, I've used numbers of tools over the years, but this one particularly at this time of the work with the Masai, um, it's a, it's a great platform to use. So. That's great. Awesome. Well, uh, you know, once again, I would reiterate, uh, uh, please go and check out the uh, Kickstarter campaign. It's on bit.ly slash voice of Mazai with a double A, -A M-A-A-S-A-I. And uh, you can uh, pledge from $5 upwards. Uh, with $15, you get a copy of the official album. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's loads of interesting tiers uh, upwards from that. Uh, you know, you, you can get a beaded bracelet for $100 uh, plus the official album. And, uh, you know, it's, there's just a lot of interesting uh, uh, perks if you are willing to spend a little bit more money and help support this project. Uh, Jesse, thanks so much for your time and this is a fantastic and, and uh, hope uh, it, it goes great but as you're already at over $2,000 uh, you know, on, on 27 days to go uh, with a 7.5 grand uh, mark, I think it, you're going to do pretty, pretty, pretty well. <laughs> Yeah, awesome, Andre. I appreciate it. So. Thank you so much. And thanks for listening to the DMT 121 show. Uh, you can find out everything on digitalmusictrends.com and follow through the links to the DMT 121 if you uh, didn't manage to catch the link. Uh, if you're running or at the gym while, we're <laughs> while you listen to the show, you can uh, go on the website and find the links over there. Thanks so much for listening. Have a fantastic week. And uh, till next time. If you enjoyed watching or listening to the show and would like to find more, head on to digitalmusictrends.com.